uh, welcome uh, to this lecture on electrical machines and uh, uh, we are uh, this uh, few lectures uh, including today's lecture will be very important so far as synchronous machine analysis part and its equivalent circuit is concerned recall that uh, last time i told you that uh, 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 a synchronous machine when the field is excited with this switch open okay uh, uh, there will be some voltage induced tf whose value directly depends on the field current and since uh, uh, the ac side is uh, open circuited if it is open circuited the same ef will appear across v as there is no current however the moment uh, you load the machine by um, some loading or connected to the bus feeding power to the bus then what happens there will be armature current which will be delivered to the load like this ok. So, terminal voltage is uh, line to line voltage root 3 V per phase equivalent circuit will be V. Let us assume that this armature current is uh, lagging power factor nature then uh, then this circuit is uh, inductive including the load as well as its internal leakage impedance r a and x l. So, armature current will lag this e f by some angle it is expected to be, but uh, mind you this is not the power factor angle power factor angle is the angle between v and this i a terminal voltage which is appearing across the load and current delivered to the load the angle between them is the power factor angle. But what happens is this that when the armature carries current uh, there will be now apart from the rotor field there will appear the stator field which will be also rotating at synchronous speed and therefore, uh, the uh, resultant field will be this phi a plus phi a, phi a will be along i a because it is a rotating field this is armature current and we know this is the RMS value. So, maximum also occurs here. So, armature rotating field will be along this line. So, phi f plus phi a if you do parallel to this I have drawn you get phi r and if this is the net field present in the machine this is not rotor field net field eh, net field resultant field. So, this two together will decide phi r and therefore, E r will be lagging phi r by 90 degree and then I have shown that this length considering these two triangles these are similar triangles this length a b is perpendicular to your I f as r. Therefore, uh, 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 your equivalent circuit will be E r and it is delivering a current I a and this is the R a plus X a L is the leakage impedance per phase of the armature coil. Therefore, uh, E r minus I a R a minus J I a X l if you subtract this drop here you will get the terminal voltage or in other words uh, some it can be also written as E r is equal to terminal voltage plus this drops here. So, this will be I a R a plus J I a X l this will be your E r E f is not there <laughs> because the E f uh, was the induced voltage per phase when the machine was under no load condition when the switch was opened. But the moment switch is closed we find that the resultant field in the air gap which causes the induced voltage in the coils uh, that changes changes to E r which is different from E f. But this change in voltage we find that the, the, this voltage the, this length is perpendicular to I a. Therefore, uh, we can assume that change in voltage from E r to E f will be 
can be considered to be a reactance voltage drop. Okay, although that reactance physically is not there, but I can always think that this change in voltage uh, may be attributed some reactance voltage drop, which I will call it as I A X A R. So, E R is there and from E R I can say that if you add this reactance voltage drop you will get back E F. So, the picture now looks like that instead of dealing with E R what we will be dealing with E F and that can be obtained uh, by considering this change in voltage from E F to E R as a reactance voltage drop. In that case the this this equivalent circuit which I earlier I drew with with E R only E R plus minus and this is the leakage reactance drop per phase X L and this was your terminal voltage V and it is uh, delivering some current I A. This is fine, but then what I will tell this same thing what I am telling I will now say okay, E F is there that is the excitation voltage under no load condition when that switch load switch was opened that thing is there. Then here you have one reactance J X A R and then I will show my E R here E R and then your R A X L R A X L and then your terminal voltage V per phase and it is delivering a current of I A. So, that you know that E R if you start from this terminal voltage will be V that these are all phasors plus I A into R A plus J X L you will get E R and your E F is nothing but same armature current is flowing. Therefore, E R it will be E R plus J I A X A R and, uh, and your full equation will be V plus I A R A plus J I A X A L plus X A R. Now, this X A R is uh, given a name it is called the armature reaction reactance that is why the subscript A R is used. So, X A R is uh, a it is a fictitious reactance and uh, it so happened that uh, this becomes perpendicular to I A and proportional to I A this length is therefore, it can be attributed to a reactive voltage drop reactance voltage drop and therefore, X A R is called armature reaction reactance and what is X L? X L is leakage reactance as it happens with any coils leakage reactance per phase and what is R A? R A is the armature resistance per phase armature resistance per phase. So, everything is per phase and eh? per phase. So, and these two together is given a name it can be considered to be a single reactance and it is called it is written as X S X suffix S and X S which is equal to X A R 
plus leakage reactance is called the synchronous reactance. A very important uh, reactance uh, whenever people talk about synchronous machine they will ask what is the armature resistance per phase, what is the synchronous reactance per phase, synchronous reactance. Now, here one must understand this R A and X L the armature resistance per phase and leakage reactance per phase these are very small which is always very small like internal resistance of a battery or things like that. So, these are small, but this X A R is quite high X A R is uh, many times higher than your X L very large compared to X A R. Therefore, after knowing this we can say okay, we will not go to the, uh, the, the this E R thing uh, if necessary we will calculate, but uh, uh, henceforth uh, the equivalent circuit therefore, will look, look like equivalent circuit. per phase of synchronous machine will then look like the excitation voltage E f and armature resistance R a and uh, the synchronous reactance X s. Mind you X s always recall it is equal to X a r plus X a l leakage this is small and uh, then uh, your load terminals or bus terminals whatever it is V all are feathers I A and I will simply say okay, E F is equal to uh, V plus um, I A into R A plus J X S this this impedance is called uh, synchronous impedance of the machine which is equal to r a plus j x s is uh, another synchronous impedance. And also here also it is true that x s is much larger than r a for example, to give you a typical uh, value if suppose the armature resistance per phase is R a your excess may be 5 times 8 times larger that is uh, if R a is 1 ohm it may be excess may be 5 ohm or 8 ohm. So, many times larger this excess is in compared to R a or also in compared to X l. Therefore, sometimes uh, so, so this is the equivalent circuit per phase of a, of a cylindrical synchronous machine cylindrical synchronous generator mode we are considering generator or synchronous machine operating as a generator. So, this is the equivalent circuit <coughs> understood. So, this point must be understood therefore, we observe one thing that is unlike the induction motor equivalent circuit of a synchronous machine is much simpler because of what there is no parallel branch like X m and R C L in parallel across the supply we used to show for a induction motor, but that parallel branch is not uh, there. So, it is a great uh, relief I mean computationally very simple circuit E f what is E f? E f is the no load induced voltage when there it is I a is 0 then the terminal voltage will be V will be equal to E f if I a equal to 0 because there will be no drop and uh, 
uh, when the machine is loaded of course, uh, V will be E f minus this drop and you get the terminal voltage. There is nothing in parallel because of the fact that is the magnetizing current for a synchronous machine it is never drawn from the bus or you must understand from this terminals. These two terminals here if you operate the synchronous machine in isolated fashion there may be a load that is all, but the exciting current is provided by a separate DC source which is connected across the rotor terminals of the machine which creates flux. Therefore, because of this uh, thing the equivalent circuit of a cylindrical synchronous generators or synchronous machine in general will be very simple. We will come to the motor mode after some time. So, that is it this is the feather diagram E f is uh, mind you it is equal to root 2 pi a flux per pole k w into n phase of the stator. And this phi is I have assumed directly proportional to I f. Therefore, in a synchronous machine if this is your armature, this is your field, this is your excitation current D c and here is the voltage and here you have connected some three phase load. So, this voltage three phase load if it is this voltage is the root 3 V and uh, excitation voltage will be inside the machine and uh, this is the internal impedance of the synchronous machine as it is this is the thing. Now, I have used the term cylindrical synchronous machine. What does it mean? It means there are actually two types of synchronous machine. Okay. Let me write it and pre presently I am talking for a synchronous machine may be of two types one is called cylindrical rotor and another is salient pole synchronous machine, salient pole synchronous machine, cylindrical rotor synchronous machine. Structurally uh, it is like this, in case of uh, cylindrical synchronous machine this is the stator which has got three phase distributed winding on the stator inner periphery in the slots we have discussed and rotor is also cylindrical in structure. And where there will be coils simple winding coils uh, where I will pass uh, DC current say cross this side and dot this side. So, that this will become a north pole, this will become a south pole of the rotor a sort of permanent magnet uh, a not permanent magnet and electromagnet kind of thing and it will be. So, so this here is I f your D c current and in this machine uh, this is the air gap air gap which is uniform, uniform air gap. So, this is cylindrical type, cylindrical type and the salient pole type is this one, the three phase winding will be housed in the on the stator just like this machine three phase winding uh, all along this R y b phase all these things okay, three phase winding three phase armature. Uh, get acquainted with these terms armature means AC windings of a synchronous machine okay, it will be like this, 
but in the rotor it is salient pole type structure that is um, it will be somewhat like this. And uh, you have uh, coils wound around it like this. So, that if this carries cross current this will carry dot current then also this will become north pole south pole of the rotor n r s r and this is your field current i f ok. So, so, so this is salient pole type. Okay. So, if I rotate uh, this uh, field then also there will be induced voltage as this fellow was doing. So, however, in this case air gap is not constant air gap is minimum here. So, air gap is varying air gap is varying it is minimum here minimum air gap. and along this line air gap is maximum is not air gap maximum in between it will have various values. Therefore, in case of cylindrical machine air gap is uniform and in case of salient pole type synchronous machine air gap is non uniform. The analysis of this salient pole type machine that is why becomes slightly involved we will discuss that later. So, till now whatever armature uh, synchronous impedance I have uh, defined and obtained uh, it is actually uh, corresponding to a cylindrical type synchronous machine where air gap is constant. Okay. So, uh, cylindrical type is also sometimes called non salient pole for obvious reasons. So, it is also called non salient pole type synchronous machine. Okay. So, uh, this so we are presently we are doing this we will take up this salient pole may be after few lectures that is also simple, but it will be slightly involved because of the fact that the air gap is not constant. Therefore, uh, coming back uh, to this uh, equivalent circuit of the synchronous uh, generator mode of operation I have done there is induced voltage and it delivers current from the plus this is how a generator mode is shown and this is your terminal voltage understood. Now, we are going to do one of the most important thing that is one good thing about synchronous machine is the equivalent circuit is very simple to handle per phase only thing between the terminal of the machine and this excitation voltage there appears a series impedance of R a plus J x s of which x s is much larger compared to R a. What people sometimes do that even they neglect R a to get uh, quickly the results computations then becomes furthermore is easier. In fact, uh, power system engineers they will not bother about R a while calculate uh, I mean modeling a transmission line and a synchronous machine they will simply say ok it has got only reactance synchronous reactance because uh, the the effect of R a will be small to calculate say fault current in a system and so on. So, nonetheless we will take R a excess together and try to find out the expression of power and torque developed by the machine. Achha, before that I just uh, do this uh, uh, 
phasor diagram of the synchronous machine. After doing this, I will just draw the phasor diagram. So, to so generator mode, follow me very carefully what I am doing. Generator mode equivalent circuit is like this, this is E f no load voltage and here is R a, here is X a r j and here is j x l and here is your terminal B and it is operating as a generator means uh, delivering current to the load or to the bus to load or to bus. So, it is customary generally to draw the phasor diagram in this way take this voltage V terminal voltage of the machine which I am calling V first draw this. Okay. And suppose let us assume generator is delivering lagging power factor load. of power factor angle theta. Then I must draw my I a here, this will be my armature current I a, this is my terminal voltage, B is terminal voltage, eh? terminal voltage. Okay. So, V and this angle is now power factor angle because angle between V and I A. Then I know E F is uh, I A R A plus J I A X S which uh, is I A R A plus J I A X A R plus J I A x a l that is all. So, I add these voltages. So, V plus let, let me use same color V plus I a r a I will add this is I a r a. Then J I a x s it will be 90 degree to this and you will get your E f. And in this one I a r a this lens of course, I have drawn quite large compared to this, these are really small I a r a small uh, and then it is not drawn to the scale, but nonetheless it is much bigger than this fellow. Not only that then I a r a if you want to get also E r it will be I A R A, you can show this as two things. So, so this length, this length is I A X S, J I A X S, of which a little of this one is J I A X A X L leakage impedance small and the remaining is your j i a x a r. It will not be necessary to break up x a l and x a r to uh, uh, find out the expression for power or to find out the expression of the torque, but here I want to show you. So, v plus i a r a plus j i a x s will give you e f. Only thing I, I will just complete this one by saying where are uh, my fields E f is this one. So, this will be your phi f or m f or uh, I mean whatever armature m m f or phi f will be like this. 
it is a uniform air gap machine so armature mmf and phi f will be same thing and this angle will be 90 degree where is your ma so phi f plus ma if you do you will get MR, is not? You will get MR. This is phi A or M A, and you will get MR or phi R. Resultant field you will get. So this is the resultant field. This is the rotor field and you know phi r m r will give you e r, e r will let up here. Anyway, we will continue this in this next lecture, but this feather diagram you please understand thoroughly. Okay? Thank you.